Our next speakers are Dan Danielle Siebold and Mary Burke. Danielle Siebold has been working as a math consultant for Kalamazoo RESA. She's provided professional development and coaching support for K-12 teachers in her county. Mary Burke is in her first year as a science consultant there, where she, too, uh, where she was a middle school science teacher prior to that for 20 years, as well as an instructional coach and specialist. Tonight, they're gonna talk about how do we support transformative change in math and science teaching and learning? Professional development is not enough. Please welcome Danielle Siebold and Mary Burke. Okay. I'm Mary Burke. And I'm Danielle Siebold. And we'd like to ask you the question, professional development. Now what? Professional development, as educators, it's something we do. It's something we're experiencing here together tonight. The strategies and goals laid out in the top 10 and 10 strategic plan for Michigan recognize the need for educators to keep educating ourselves to ensure that each of our students has equitable access to high quality instruction through their teachers. The same strategies and goals laid out in the top 10 and 10 call for an urgent, drastic amount of change. We must change. But we didn't need the top 10 and 10 to tell us that. We knew this just by having our new standards in both science and mathematics. The math standards from 2010 and the science standards from this past year, 2016, are something different. They're not a new way to do old business. They're new business. They require students to develop habits of mind as illustrated in the science and engineering practices and in, this, in the standards of mathematical practice. They require more of students. They require students to become problem solvers, complex thinkers, and complex doers. They require deeper learning. They require three-dimensional learning. As a result, we educators must change. We must rise to the challenge required by increased expectations for teaching and learning. And as learners, our PD must change as a result. We need new supports to be able to meet these new demands. So professional development. I want you to take a moment and think about the professional development that you've experienced over your career. Because I've experienced many professional developments. And when I thought back, I could come up with three different types. The first one I'd like to call is the sit and get. And that's where a presenter comes and shares their expertise with me. And I'm taking that information back to my classroom in my building. There's the next type, which I'd like to call the real world experience, where I'm acting and doing science and doing math as a scientist or mathematician would do. And finally, I've been to PDs, which I would like to call social and emotional connection PDs, where I'm learning how to create an environment that's rich and the students are engaged and we're having relationships between student and teacher and teacher or student and student. But the question becomes, I learned a lot of information, but how much should I really take back to my classroom? And if you think about that yourself, did you take back 100%? what you learned and implemented it into your classroom? Did you take 75% or maybe 50% or was it more like 25% of what you learned at, at those professional developments you actually took back and implemented and not just implemented on one day but over a long um, frame of time? And so I got, to be, I got to thinking, so why is it that I couldn't get to 100%? And my reality was I came back to my classroom in my building and I was completely overwhelmed. Overwhelmed in the fact that I couldn't keep up with the changes that were being required of me. Overwhelmed because in my building I might have competing initiatives. So which initiative am I going to be following? Or it might be, oh yes, I've got these really great ideas in these tasks, but do I go right or do I go left? And then usually for me what happened was, oh my gosh, I have 50,000 ideas, but I don't even know where to begin. Now for others it might be barriers like they don't believe the vision. They don't understand the vision or they want to practice, but they're not getting any feedback and they're not getting any collaboration. So those things that they're learning in the professional development are not taking place over long periods of time. They're not becoming part of the classroom instruction. So the question becomes, how do you take what you learn in a professional development and move it into that toolbox where you're using it on a consistent and regular basis to help student achievement? 
We accomplish that by doing more. Professional development in and of itself is necessary, but it's not sufficient. Professional development helps us to build our toolbox of knowledge, skills, and strategies, but we need something more. We need something else to help us use our toolbox once we get back to our buildings and to our classrooms. When we consider what, what that might be, we propose coaching, classroom coaching, as that something more to help us move into fidelity and implementation. After all, educators are faced almost daily with complex challenges that seemingly require us to fit a square peg into a round hole. So we want to do more and provide more to ensure implementation. So why coaching? Because it works. What do we know about professional development on its own? Well, on its own, it doesn't work. We attend professional development sessions, no matter how inspiring they are. We're presented with theory. There's a discussion of that theory, much like is occurring, one-sided at least right now. Discussion of that theory. And some of us are able to demonstrate immediately new knowledge, new skills. But unfortunately, none of us are able to transfer that back into our classrooms. Other types of professional development engage us in the theory, discussions, and also demonstration of that theory. In that case, more of us are able to immediately demonstrate new knowledge, new knowledge and new skills, but yet we're still not able to bring it back to our classrooms. If we're lucky enough to attend a professional development that does it all, we'll get the theory, we'll get discussion, we'll get demonstration. There'll even be an expectation that we as learners will practice with that theory and our instructors will provide us with feedback. In that case, over half of us are able to immediately demonstrate our new knowledge and skills, but yet when we go back to our schools, to our buildings, we're not able to, to implement. Only 5% of us are able to carry that forward with us. It's only when we consider adding on-site coaching or classroom coaching to the equation do we move the dial. In that case, 95% of us, of course, are able to implement and show in the training environment that we, we can demonstrate our knowledge, we can demonstrate our new skill. But because coaching takes place within the classroom, we're also in our classrooms. So we uh, impact our classrooms immediately and we're able to transfer new knowledge, skills, and strategies directly into our classrooms. There is impact, there is change with coaching. So what's that look like? How's that work? Well, in classroom coaching, you've got a coach and you've got at least one teacher. Together, they're developing a relationship built on trust and that relationship is focused on a couple of things. It's focused on problem solving around implementation in a collaborative spirit. So the coach and the teacher work together, first off, in narrowing the focus. After attending a professional development, as Mary discussed earlier, she came back with 5,000 different things, excited to do all of them, and not knowing to go, where to go with any of them. So a coach is there to help narrow the focus and pick one, two, maybe three strategies to work on implementing with fidelity. In that process, then, the coach is able to serve as a sounding board and provide advice and feedback to ensure that the teacher is able to implement strategies successfully. And since all of this is done within the classroom, we recognize immediate positive change with coaching. Mary's going to walk you through a process that we've engaged at Kalamazoo RISA to incorporate coaching into professional development. So we've been working on developing a professional learning cycle that contains both of them. In our professional learning cycle, we have five stages. And we created this through a math and science partnership. The first step we would like to call setting the stage. And that is where we go in and we um, are introduced to our teachers that we'll be coaching. And we begin to form a relationship with them through spending time in their classrooms and interviewing them. We then implemented our professional development, specifically for science. That was the Next Generation Science Exemplars. It was a five-day professional development series, three days one month, two days another month. In our math classes, our, our participants took place in what uh, our professional development was called Cultivating Resilient Problem Solvers. This professional development was developed around the true math framework. 
This professional development, again, is five days, but it actually takes place over a five-month period, one professional development a month. After our teachers were um, put through their professional development, they moved into what we would call the planning phase. And that is where we start to narrow the focus. We begin to look at some of the tools and strategies that were, um, were learned in the professional development, and then we select from there, and we create an observation tool, one where we can collect data on how the implementation is going on that specific strategy. After that, we move to the focusing in phase, and that is where I will go in and we'll collect an initial data. The teacher and I will sit down, we'll analyze our data on the implementation of that strategy, and we'll start to craft our plan. How are we going to improve what your baseline data is telling you? What is our end goal? From there, we move into the classroom-specific coaching and conferencing, and that is where we'll go in, we collect data again, we may do some team teaching, we may do some demonstrations, and then we sit down with the teachers and we conference around what we found was going on in that classroom. From there, we adjust our plan. For science teachers, we may adjust our plan and continue with the same focus if they haven't met the goal yet, or if they've met the goal, we may go back to the planning phase and begin to look at a new focus for them. For our math counterparts, it was actually after the conferencing phase, we went back to the professional development cycle and had a new layer of math strategies that they were exposed to. So, what have we learned? We've learned there are some non-negotiables to learning. The first and foremost non-negotiable is classroom routines and structures. If a teacher has those solidly in place, learning will occur. If a teacher does not have those in place, learning is not going on. The second non-negotiable to learning is student engagement. All students need to engage every day to high levels with the learning activities in a classroom. If a student's not engaged in the learning activities, they're not going to be learning. So we've got these two non-negotiables that we've discovered are really the foundation for learning in all classrooms. And we need to attend to both of those as foundational before we can even hope to begin content coaching, which then focuses on either high quality math instruction or high quality science instruction. So once we've worked with teachers on those two foundational pieces, we engage in content coaching with them, focusing on content-specific instruction. And we've learned that we need to keep the focus on individual teacher needs throughout the process. From there, we started to look at the specifics. So first of all, we are finding that implementation is happening both in math and science. It may vary from teacher to teacher, but it is occurring with our support. We have found through the science work that we've been doing that most teachers from the NGSX are starting with developing and creating norms that they're implementing into their classrooms so that they're creating a culture of learning and using productive talks so they can move to some of the other strategies later down the road. With our math um, professional development, we found that the structure of how we had it time framed from month to month was not enough time to have the coaching cycle occur in between the professional development series. So, where are we going in the future? We're excited to say that through our collaboration together, we have found a, a lot of um, commonalities between math and science through our science and engineering practices, through the standards for mathematical practice as well. We have found that there's a lot of co um, commonalities with our ELA and our social studies counterparts. So we're excited for next year because we will be doing integrated math and science, science and ELA, um, professional developments for our teachers. And we feel like we've talked so long about teaching in silos, and sometimes we're doing professional development in silos, we're excited to bring those together. We're also finding that we need to continue working with growth mindset principles. We're asking our students to do higher level thinking, and this is a challenge for them. So making sure that our teachers are working with growth mindset principles will also be a key. And at the same time, we want to continue to um, target deeper learning and social and emotional competencies through the discourse of math and science. So we ask you at the beginning of this session to, to wonder about professional development, now what?
coaching, of course, as long as you pair and sequence coaching with professional development. The professional development begins to build our toolbox. It gives us necessary knowledge, skills, strategies. And then when we follow up with classroom coaching, we're, we are supported in using our toolbox in our classrooms. And in doing so, we're able to ensure that each of our students has equitable access to high quality instruction in both math and science. And we'd like to thank you. Thank you.